Patrice can't talk, but what if they have been warning us this whole time? What if the secrets in their rings aren't just records of the past, but a prediction of what's coming this summer? The hottest summer in 2000 years, the trees saw it coming. And they might already know what's in store for your summer this year. Today, we're letting the trees do the talk. And trust me, they've got a lot to say. Last summer and the one before that weren't just hot. They shattered temperature records going back 2,000 years. And we all felt the consequences of extreme heat. Wait, you can't even get the 10-day forecast right. How can we possibly know what summer felt like 2,000 years ago? It's a great question. There aren't many reliable ways to record global temperatures that far back. The earliest thermometers didn't show up until about the 1600s, and most global temperature records start at 1880. So what? You've got, like, a climate change time machine hiding in your lab? Even better. I have these. Trees? Okay, explain. Where are the trees in your lab, first of all? Well, I have trees in nature. I'm gonna go in here and explore what the tree is telling us. From the inside. You know when we've been on a hike and counted tree rings to try and guess a tree's age? Right. Each year, a tree lays down a new ring. Count them up and you've got the tree's age. Mm -hmm. But not all rings are created equal. In warm, wet years, they develop big, fat rings. But in cool or dry years, narrow, tight rings. And taken together, those differences provide important clues about each and every year that tree has been alive. Stack them up year after year. And you've got a climate barcode. A natural receipt of every growing season, every drought, every heat wave, even volcanic eruptions. Really, it's like time travel. Some trees have been alive for thousands of years. They saw the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Pretty amazing. It's a long time to be alive. Thousands of years? They're still not older than you, though. <laughs> this is great being a parent. Exactly. And when scientists combine tree ring data from all over the world and then combine that with other sources of information like from ice cores and corals and ocean sediments, they can reconstruct climate history going back thousands of years. Which brings us to the last few summers. So, what did the trees say about 2023? Brace yourself, because the summer of 2023 was officially the hottest in the Northern Hemisphere in 2,000 years. And that's not just a shocking statistic, it's a dramatic rupture in a climate record that trees have been quietly keeping for centuries. Wait, are you saying no summer in the Roman Empire, the Middle Ages, or even the Dust Bowl was hotter than 2023? Hotter than all of it. Researchers analyzed tree rings from sites across the Northern Hemisphere, and they compared 2023 to a full reconstructed climate record from year one, and 2023 still came out on top. Hotter than even the warmest summer in the Roman Empire, which was year 2046, by 0.5 degrees Celsius. That's kind of terrifying. Yeah, it gets worse. So global warming is usually measured against temperatures in the pre-industrial era. This is the period before widespread fossil fuel use. This is where trees have an advantage. They can give us a much more reliable data for a much longer pre-industrial period. And using that data, we see that 2023 wasn't just warmer than the last 2000 years. It was 2.2 degrees Celsius hotter than the average summer using data starting from year one blowing way past international goals to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Some scientists say that it might have been the hottest summer in 125,000 years. So we don't have enough year-by-year -year data that that far back to know for sure. Oh, but we do know at least one summer that was hotter than summer 2023. Summer 2024? Yeah. So summer 2023 was hottest, but summer 2024 was hotter. Summer 2025 is just not looking good. Okay, but if trees tell us about the past, how do we know they'll help us predict the future? Excellent question. Scientists use tree rings to test and fine tune climate models. If a model can recreate what we already know, 2000 years of temperature ups and downs, it's more likely to predict what's coming next. So trees aren't just storytellers, they're climate change fortune tellers? Pretty much, yeah. They show us where we've been and where we're headed if we keep burning fossil fuels at today's pace. And here's the part we can't ignore about summer 2025. Do I wanna know? Is it another uh, record-breaking uh, summer? Well, 2023 broke the 2000 year record and then 2024 broke the 2023 record. So summer 2025, early indicators suggest it will be in the top three, at least. That's three red hot summers in a row, not great. Nope, it really isn't. But there's a twist. 2023 and 2024 were both boosted by El Nino when warm Pacific waters supercharge global temperatures. 
This year, we're transitioning from a weak La Nina, which tends to cool things slightly. So some models suggest that summer 2025 might land in third place. But even third place in the hottest summers ever contest isn't exactly reassuring. Yeah, no, it really isn't. Especially when scientists warn that crossing the 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius barrier of global warming could bring severe consequences. More extreme heat, wildfires, crop failures, rising sea levels, consequences we are already experiencing. So if this is the new normal, when does it stop? Well, that depends on us and the actions we take right now. Trees have lived through volcanic winters, mega droughts, ice ages. They've seen the planet change again and again and again and again and again. And they've been quietly tracking it all. Yeah, and they're not panicking. They're just growing and recording and remembering. Waiting for us to finally pay attention. So the next time you pass a tree, think of it as a climate storyteller. One that has stood for centuries through floods and fires and famines, and it's still here and it's still recording. The trees have spoken. The question now is, what will we do with what they've told us? The future's not up to the trees. It's up to us. And if we don't act, history has already told us what happens next. We know that runaway global warming can kill 90% of life on Earth because it has already happened once. 